Hello, FBC Salinas. This is Pastor John coming to you with another edition of the Midweek Refresher video, where I desire to do two things. Number one, provide you some information, and number two, also provide you some inspiration in the middle of your week. Certainly hope your week is going well. You hear me say that every single week, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And if it's not going well, may this video serve as a reminder that God is with us, that he will not fail us. And if your week is going well, then rejoice in that and thank the Lord for his goodness to you this week. All right. So, hey, real quickly, uh, we have family camp coming up this week. Uh, we'd ask those of you that are unable to join us be praying that uh, it's a wonderful time of fun and fellowship and, and getting to know not only one another better, but our Lord better. So be praying about that. And then in a number of weeks, on July 30th, and it's coming up very rapidly, we have our block party, our carnival block party is what we're calling it this year. And we invite you to participate in that. And you can participate in a number of ways. Number one, by praying for us and for the event. Number two, by reaching out to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, and inviting them to, inviting them to this event at, on July 30th from 4 to 7 p.m. Number three, number three way that you can help with us is volunteering by coming in and helping us out with the different games that we're doing, with the different booths that we'll have. There's a variety of things going on that day from the youngest to the oldest. There's something for everyone, and we need your help to make this happen. Number four, you can provide cake kits. I've been talking about those for the last number of weeks. We're having a cakewalk, and instead of giving people a, a made cake, they will simply get a cake kit like Duncan Hines or whatever it is that you would like to give in that area. <laughs> and uh, they will get to go home and make bake a cake as a family. That would be a pretty cool thing. Also, we need, we're having what we're calling a produce market, and so we need produce. And so if you have some vegetables or fruit that you'd like to donate to that, it would be a great thing. It'll be an opportunity for us to help share some nutritious food with people around us. And we are having a food truck, we are having karaoke, we are having a, a slide for the children, an inflatable slide, a variety of games. We're having a salsa judging contest. It is going to be fantastic. And to top it all off, we will be having homemade ice cream. And that's going to be a great time from 4 to 7 on July 30th. And if you can help out in any of those ways, that would be great. Sign up at the church or go to the website and let us know that you're interested. I'll email us at info at fbcsalinas.com, letting, letting us know you're interested. If you have questions, don't be afraid to email me at john at fbcsalinas.com. Be more than happy to answer those questions for you. All right, so that's it pretty much for the announcements. Oh, one other thing. On July 31st, on July 31st, we are going to have another name tag Sunday. We've had some new people joining the uh, coming to the church and so or coming and worshiping with us in person. So we're going to have name tag Sunday on July 31st. It's real simple. You're going to show up. You're going to get a name tag. You're going to put your name on it. And that way, people who are new or perhaps have been coming for a long time and don't know who you are, they'll be able to acknowledge and see who you are and know your name. They'll be able to put a name with the face. All right. So that's on July 31st, Name Tag Sunday. Looking forward to that as well. Hey, we, we have a great God and he wants the very best for us. And I've been walking my way through this book of Second Chronicles. It's part of my part of my uh, devotional time, if you want to call that. And I, I, I gotta, I'll confess to you, I find First and Second Chronicles a little bit boring at times. I'm sorry, but I, but I do. And even though that may very well be my opinion on it, there are some really interesting things that happen in this, in these books that I think have great relevancy for us today. And I believe the entire Bible has great relevancy to us today. And I was reading in 2 Chronicles chapter 12, and it's interesting what's going on here. So Rehoboam had, I'll just give you the quick background. Rehoboam has become king, and he's one of Solomon's sons. And listen to what happens in chapter 12, verse 1. After Rehoboam's position as king was established, and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him 
abandon the law of the Lord. Because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam. What strikes me is this, is that oftentimes when we're in crisis, we cling to the Lord. We reach out to the Lord. We say, Lord, help me. But Rehoboam does what so often we do, which is when things are good, what do we do? Uh, not really. I don't really need him right now. I don't need the Lord right now. Because listen again, after Rehoboam's position as king was established and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord. I get it. Things are crazy right now and they continue to get, it seems to me, crazier. And yet in the midst of all of this, God's goodness still is poured out on us. And then there are these moments, not just moments, but even seasons where things are really good. Even in the midst of all the craziness that's going on, we experience God's goodness. And why is it that we then say, yeah, I'm okay, God, I'm, I'm okay. I've been there. I'm pretty confident you've probably been there. Why do we do that? I don't know. I think perhaps it's, well, I think a big reason is because we're pretty, pretty prideful people thinking that we can do it on our own. But the reality is God wants the best for us all the time, all the time. And so Rehoboam abandons the Lord and all the people abandon the Lord. This king named Shishak, which is an interesting name, um, comes in, invades them and, and, and comes after them. And, and when he enters into Jerusalem, listen to what he does. Verse nine, when Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem, he carried off all the treasures of the temple of Yahweh and the treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, including the gold shields Solomon had made. Rehoboam's father, Solomon, was a great king. Yes, he made some really bad decisions. We know that. And in his reign, he made these shields that were made out of gold, which is strong, which, is, which can handle so many different things. He had an abundance of this, and he made all these gold shields along with the, the lavishness of the palace and the lavishness of the temple. Did all this. And in one foul swoop, Rehoboam messes it up because he abandons the Lord. Now, here's what's interesting. Shishak comes in, takes the gold, the best stuff. And what does Rehoboam do in verse 10? So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them. Bronze shields. So often in life, God wants to give us the very best and things get going really well for us. We abandon him because God's good to us. He he's takes care of us and, and we abandon him. And what ends up happening? When we abandon God, we end up with not the greatest anymore. We end up suffering consequences that affect us greatly. Rehoboam went from gold shields to bronze shields. Oh, they may have looked like gold from a distance, but up close, they were nothing close to what they were supposed to be. That's the way it works with compromise. That's the way it works with when we abandon what we know to do as far as, God, as, far as Christ followers. We end up with not very good stuff. My prayer for us as the world continues to go in the direction that it's going, my prayer for us is that we not forget that our God is good, that we not forget that we are to follow after him. We are to follow after him. And it's tempting to do the slow creep away from him and abandon him. Yet when we do that, we end up with bronze, not gold. And our God wants to give us the best and we experience the best when we follow after him. It might not be monetarily, it might not be this or that, but his peace, his contentment are strong. Those are, those are valuable, those are invaluable, especially in these days. So it's my prayer for you, for me, for all of us, that we not abandon the Lord and we rejoice in his goodness to us and continue seeking after him no matter what's going on around us. Let's not abandon him. 
Let's continue to pursue after him and enjoy his goodness as we live out our lives. I love you. I'm thankful for you. And I pray that you have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.